Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in War Thunder. We're going to start by optimizing Windows, and after that we're going to take a look on your Radian and Nvidia parameter. And at the end we will go inside of the game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings. And we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're going to start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processors. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture, capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode honestly is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power. Uh, back then, uh, we were recommending to use the best performance, but now honestly just use balance you will have better boost clock longer boost clock uh, i did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance and honestly i'm getting better result with balance so super important to do that another thing uh, i want to mention is some recommendations so make sure that your uh, xmp profile is activated if you have it on your bios super important Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your cpu if you have an amd or intel also, make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest updates from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now for the NVIDIA app, uh, before I was uh, changing the DLSS version directly in the game, but now you have a global setting on NVIDIA if you use the latest version uh, from the beta one. And that's pretty cool because you can push a global setting for all your different games. So in the DLSS version over there, override model preset, I really recommend to use the latest one. So you're going to always push the latest uh, version of frame generation latest version of rear reconstruction and the latest version of super resolution so you will always have the latest version of dlss4 the latest model uh, so even right now i think they have uh, in war thunder there are two or three um, version behind so if you push the latest one you will have a better image quality low latency mode use on i like to lock my fps at 237 because i'm using g-sync and i have a 240 hertz monitor so you don't want more fps than the amount of hertz of your monitor because you're going to lose your g-sync so super important to do that if you have that shader cache size i'm putting 100 gig because i have a lot of uh, space on my disk drive by default i think the nvidia is using five uh, if you have space go with 10 or 100 this can be good to activate if you install a lot of different games so for example at five gigs sometimes your shader cache size will be full so each time you will boot a new game you will have to reconstruct your shader sometimes you can have like uh, issues with that and uh, it can cause stuttering and stuff like that so that's why I recommend to add a little bit more if you have this space. In the system section, if you want to use G-Sync, for sure activate it. Make sure that it's activated on your monitor also. Uh, in the display properties, make sure that you're playing native with your resolution and the IS refresh rate. You know, a lot of people, they're buying an IS refresh rate the monitor, but Windows put uh, the uh, default at 60 and they don't use it. So super important to look at this. And the last one, color. If you have an HDR monitor and you have a monitor that's compatible with 10-bit color, make sure that you're using 10-bit over there. Make sure that you're using full for the dynamic range. Also, for the digital vibrance, I like to put 5% more. It's a little bit more uh, saturation. The game looks less gray, so that's why I'm using that. And in the performance tab, in the power maximum, I like to put at maximum 133%. Gonna put a little bit more wattage to your video card, so you're gonna get the better boost clock, longer boost clock. Um, 
Again, you need the space on your card. So if you have bad thermal, you don't have the room on it, on it, it will not work. But if you have pretty good thermal and your card can do a little bit better, it will work. Normally, you can get 5 to 7% boost in your FPS. And also, if you're doing a, a 3D mark, uh, you can also see a 5% uplift to your uh, score benchmark score. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Now let's go to Radian. So now for Radian card, we're going to go to settings, display first. Make sure that you're using your free sync. If you have a monitor compatible with it, you're going to make sure that you're going to synchronize your GPU with your monitor. So really important to use that. After that, we're going to go to gaming in the graphics section. Make sure that you're using the custom profile. So don't use those presets over there. Make sure that you're selecting your GPU. In my case, it's a 9070 XT. Don't use your integrate GPU. It can be tricky if you're playing on a laptop or even a desktop like me that has an integrate GPU. After that, the first one that you will need to look at is your uh, FSR 4 that you can force in some game that it's uh, using FSR 3. This one, uh, it's not necessarily everybody will have it. It really depends if your card is compatible with it. So definitely enable it if you have it. Also, I want to mention if you're playing in a game that uh, doesn't have FSR, doesn't have frame generation and you're struggling with your FPS, Fluent Motion Frame can be a nice uh, option over there. You activate it, you're going to get like 30 to 30% boost. It will add input lag, so don't use that if you're playing a competitive game, but this one can help with an uh, older game. Uh, don't use Anti-Lag 1, this one is not good. Don't use a Radiant Boost. Radiant Chill, I really recommend to use it. And I will explain you why. So for an example, in my case right now, I have a 170 Hertz monitor. And to stay in your free sync range, you need to be, uh, you need to produce less than 170 FPS. So my recommendation is take your amount of Hertz on your uh, monitor. In my case, it's 170. Do minus three and lock your FPS at 167. You can do the same thing if you have a 240 Hertz monitor, go with 30, uh, 237. Uh, so you're always going to make sure that you stay in your free sync range. It's better for uh, the fluidity of your image. And also, really important, if you want less input lag, you need to make sure that your GPU is not at 100% utilization. So uh, 98, 97, something like that. So sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS. Again, it depends on the game. Maybe in some game, 160 F 67 FPS will be 100% uh, utilization for me. So you can go maybe a little bit lower. You can also do it per game. Right now in the graphics section, I'm doing it for all my games on my computer. But sometimes, I don't know, you're playing the new Assassin's Creed. Just go to Assassin's Creed and you can lock your FPS over there if you want. So really important to do that for your uh, utilization, but also to make sure that you're staying in your free sync range. Another thing that I want to mention, image sharpening too can be nice if you don't add FSR in game or a sharpness a slider. Uh, so if you're playing an old game or a game that just have like TAA and the game is very blurry, activate this and move your slider between something 60 to 70% depending on your preference. And it will really help to have a better image quality. Last thing that I want to mention, if you have some random stuttering and you don't know why, this option at the end can be really nice. It resets your shader cache, so you just perform a reset. And after that, when you will reopen your game, it will just rebuild your shader. Sometimes it can take time, so don't go too crazy if your game is lagging, but uh, it can help. I, I saw a lot of person uh, having this issue with Call of Duty, so this one can really help you. So this is pretty much it, guys. Make sure that you have the latest uh, version of your driver, and I also have a dedicated drive on uh, how to overclock your GPU. For me, it gives me 12% boost in my FPS without too much effort, so you can definitely look at my guide. So now let's go in the game. So now inside of the game, so first of all, for the mode, I really recommend to go with full screen. Make sure that you're playing your native resolution. For the API, you have two different API, DirectX 11 and 12. If you want to use 12 uh, because you want a frame generation, you want to use FSR or because you want ray tracing, you will have to use 12. If not, you definitely you can use uh, DirectX 11. I'm getting more FPS with 11 and it's a little bit more stable. But again, if you need FSR, you will not have it. So really question of preference. And honestly, if you have a, a decent and modern computer, DirectX 12 is not that bad. 
Anti-L easing method, you have a lot of different options. So for sure, if you have an RTX card, you go with the DLSS4. This is the best one that you can use. It's pretty good. I recommend quality. Um, you're going to get 10% over there. Balance at 15%. I don't recommend balance in 1080p. The game looks too blurry for me. So at 1440p, 4K balance is good. Uh, if not, just go with quality. FSR also, uh, if you want to use that, and XESS from Intel, they're almost on par, honestly. I don't see a big difference between both for image quality. Definitely, the LSS is better, but still, it will do the job. You're going to get a nice 8 to 10% boost in your FPS. I don't recommend to use TAA or TSR. The game looks too blurry with them, so if you don't, you, you don't want to use an upscaling technique, go with FXAA HQ. After that, uh, Anisotropy, you can run 16x without an issue. If you have any NVIDIA Reflex, go with on. Frame generation is compatible for uh, 4000 and 5000 series. Also, you need to run DirectX 12. And honestly, I feel too much input lag with it. So I don't recommend to use that. Texture quality, normally at 4 gig and more of VRAM, you can use I without any issue. Shadow quality, I recommend to go with low. You're going to get a nice 10% boost over there. So that's pretty good. And you're going to keep some shadow in your game. And after that, I'm going to tell you which parameter will provide you the most of your FPS. But again, it really depends on your computer. Do you want immersion? Do you want image uh, uh, quality? Or you just want pure performance and seeing enemy? So for sure, if you want to see enemy, just go low everywhere. So again, it's really a question of preference. Water quality can run medium with too much, too, really not too much impact on your FPS. You're going to lose like 1%, so it's not that bad. Water effect quality, I recommend to go with low. Cloud quality, you just have like a huge bracket like this. I recommend to go like this at me, uh, medium. And cloud quality on ground, I recommend to go with one quarter over there. Reflection quality will tank your FPS like crazy, so I recommend to just deactivate them. Effect resolution, resolution go with low. Terrain quality, go with one quarter. Ambient occlusion, this one is a bit tricky. You have a couple of options like that. The game looks very flat without it, but you're going to get a nice 5% boost. So if you need those FPS, definitely remove that. Also, it's a little bit better for your visibility. Tire and track mark, I recommend to go with medium. Not a huge impact on your FPS. Cockpit mirror reflection, this one can tank your FPS like crazy. It's a slider, so don't go too crazy with that. Go over there. Global illumination quality, go with low. Physic quality, if you have a bad CPU, this one can tank also your FPS, so don't go too crazy with this one. And if you have like a really bad CPU, just go like zero. Don't put that. Tyrion displace uh, man quality, you can definitely do one quarter. After that, you have the render part. Tree range, don't go too crazy, something like that. Particle density, again, if you have a bad uh, CPU and you're dropping when something is exploding, just go with uh, nothing like this. If not, just go like this. Grass range, something like one quarter. It's not that bad, but when you go after medium, you're going to see some drop in your FPS. And small object shadow, I recommend to deactivate it. For everything else, put no. I don't recommend to use ray tracing if you want FPS. For sure, if you want a nice image quality, go with it. Again, you need DirectX 12 to run that. And also, you can use some post effects that I like to use for sharpness. So this is pretty much when I'm using. I deactivate the film grain and I'm using the dynamite loot. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my War Thunder guide in 2025. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. We'll try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.